We are fortunate that this episode clearly survived within the Hebrew Bible without apparent interference or editing. And it astonishes me that Shakespeare never turned his attention to so dramatic and timeless a scene. The luckless Saul, of course, perished the next day in conflict with the Philistine enemy. This point bears on how the narrative came into being. The supreme literary quality of the Endor episode is, to me, its realistic nature, at once gripping and somehow convincing. To my mind, the passage can be neither backdated creative writing nor a made-up historical episode as it is often characterised. The only possible author of the record, as we read it in its own terms, is one of Saul's two companions. They witness an historical event like no other, and the published account is exactly that of a silent observer. No one else but the ghost mistress knew what had happened. Guildenstern, then, or Rosencrantz, confiding to some chronicler engaged on recording dynastic history, spilled the beans. In our hunt for the ghost world of the ancient Middle East, the affair at Endor is of unparalleled importance. Its description in conjunction with the written Babylonian accounts of necromancy acquires the status of prime testimony. Many later writers, Jewish and Christian alike, wrestling with ghosts and underworlds, have found royal necromancy at Endor quite indigestible. According to the summary of Saul's career in the biblical 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13, he died for being unfaithful to the Lord and, moreover, inquiring of a ghost. But in the later deuterocanonical book of Sirach, the whole episode is thoroughly bodlerized. Even after Samuel had fallen asleep, he prophesied and made known to the king his death and lifted up his voice from the ground in prophecy to blot out the wickedness of the people. In 1979, Klaus Schmelich published a very illuminating article summarising the deft ways in which theologians of both persuasions wriggled so desperately out of accepting the narrative as presented. None of these authorities seems to have considered for a moment reading the account as a literary record and taking it at faith value, as I have done experimentally here. And they have explanations for every bit of the dismantled story. The point here is that the Saul at Endor episode and its later treatment encapsulates the very transition from the stage when ghosts were believed imperfectly to when naive ghost belief is no longer deemed acceptable. Later theological interpretation does all it can to disguise what the text plainly tells us. That a famous Old Testament king went to call up a famous dead Old Testament prophet with the help of a local professional necromancer and up he came. In that world, around the turn of the first millennium BC, that is what people did. 